Hey, what's up? How's everybody doing? I hope all is well. What are we gonna talk about? What are we gonna do? One of the topics that I have is called the science of blooming. Does pre-infusion improve flavor? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna go a little step further. Notice is that sometimes when we talk about pre-infusion, we're not really thinking about the extraction. So it's twofold. Pre-infusion is extremely important because, well, it can be, let's see, let's find out. So I think what we're gonna have three different experiments. One with no pre-infusion at all. Another is gonna be a 30 second, uh, uh, bloom face and then the other one is going to be one minute. and then when we're done we're also going to take samples of each of those and we're going to see what the extractions are so we're going to taste for flavor and then we're going to see actually how much of an extraction the coffees really are and what i'll be using is this vst tool i don't know if you know about it but it's called a uh, it helps you find out what extraction you're at so we're going to play around with this and seeing what we want to get out of the coffee I think if you ask me right now, what are my predictions with this coffee and everything, probably the 30 second bloom is gonna be probably the most flavorful. I think it's gonna also probably be the most well-balanced extraction too. I think 60 seconds may be too long. And I think uh, if you're running down with the uh, faster brew, so to speak, with no pre effusion I don't think it's gonna extract as much as it should, but let's find out. Let's go ahead and give this a try. And we're gonna just have fun with this, right? My goal most of the time is to aim for, when I do one to 15 ratio, about a 20% extraction. I like 20 just because it's right in the middle. 18 is a little too, too acidic. And then 23, when you over extract at times, get too bitter. I mean, it kind of depends on the coffee, but what I've been noticing lately, that's the way I like to do it. But as you can see right here, what we're working with is a TDS of 1.46. That's our target. That's what we're trying to get to. I'm not too sure if you're from, from familiar with a refractometer and I like using it because it gives you an idea what you're really working with the coffee. You may like a certain coffee for whatever reason, but at least you know what type of flavors that you do like when it comes to extraction. So we're going to do the no bloom and I'm expecting the no bloom extremely under extracted. Close this up. We're going to push this button. Ooh, oh shit. Just exactly what I was thinking. So that one is a 0. Eight, two. So when you come back here and look at it here, and then you go to 0.82, it's at 11% extraction, which is poor, which that's what I was actually tasting. So let's go ahead and do the next one. And I think that could be more so to the way I actually uh, brewed it. We got the 30 seconds. So 0 0.93. So that one is just as equally shitty. So now we go here, the extraction is better, but it's still severely under extract. Okay. And that's more so what I was taking in the cup too. So let's go ahead and do the last one. Okay. That's 104. Okay. 101. Sometimes when it's not room temp, it kind of just plays around. 10. Let's do one more time. Okay. 102. So that does make sense. Just like I was talking about when I was actually tasting it. It's interesting, right? So what kind of stuff did we learn here? Quite a bit, actually. I suck at brewing when I'm trying to do a lot of things. <laughs> oh, that's one thing. But I think we did learn a couple things here. You know, if we're really thinking about this objectively and looking at the brews, it did get better. The extractions did get better. The flavors did get better as we gave it more time. So I think it is important to make sure the biggest takeaway is that we go ahead and wet the grinds evenly as much as we can. What other things did we learn? We learned that it seems like the longer you hold the coffee, you know, as a bloom, it does extract even more. And I think it can get to the point where it is going to be a lot of dimension return on this. It's all good because that's where we can tweak and find out what's best and understand the coffees a little bit more. And as we develop our palate, develop our recipes and all that stuff, that's how we can get better. And I like using the Hardy V60. To me, the Hardy V60 is truly one of the best brewers out. And since I've tried it so many times, it's easy for me to like gauge what I'm tasting. And as you saw in Eric's Experiment, even though I didn't brew it correctly, even though that does play a part to the extraction. I guess what I'm really trying to say is that the Harvey B60 to me lets me know if something is right, even without using all that gear that I have and understanding it that way. One thing that we do or can take away from all this is that as we were extracting more, you know, with the blooms, the coffees did taste better. That I think that's part of one of the correlations that we can actually make in this 
little quick test. So what does that mean? I think there's some more room for trying more things. And as we go about it, I think that's the thing that we're gonna really try to gather more information and really try to understand in this journey that we take together. So if there's anything that you wanna add or tell me about the things that I've done, things that you probably saw as mistakes, let me know. If you learned something, let me know too. That'd be kind of cool. Um, so take this, I wouldn't say with a grain of salt, but take it as one piece of your development as you go and, and find out what's your best way of you actually making your coffee. Cause that's what it comes up to. I don't expect you to spend 800 plus dollars on that type of piece of gear to actually understand what you're tasting. I think for the most part, I'll do that for you, <laughs> but your palate is good enough. Your palate, trust it and go with it. So we're gonna try some more things out a little bit more and we're gonna see how we can make this even better than what it is, right? Talk to you later. Bye. You know, I couldn't just end the, uh, the experiment there. So I went ahead and I'm doing this over again. So this right here is going to be the uh, no bloom. So I'm gonna pour 50 grams of coffee in. I'll wait. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do 100 grams of coffee of water. And then I'm gonna finish it off with 150 grams. And this one right here is the no bloom coffee. And then this one is going to be the bloom coffee. So we're gonna do 50 grams. So close, close enough, this is about 40, 50 grams of coffee. We're gonna wait 30 seconds. All right, gonna do 100 grams. So that should take us to 150. So it looked kind of similar. Still a crappy job, but you know, it's all good. This one right here is the 30 second uh, bloom. And then this one right here is the no bloom. And it's still crappy the way I brewed it, you know, but they look extremely similar. This one right here is no bloom right here. So we're gonna taste it first, okay? Let's taste it, see how the flavors are. And as you can see in that experiment that I did earlier, the coffees, did I pour some? Yeah, I pour some. As you can see in that experiment that I just did also, the uh, coffee beds look mostly the same. Still crappy kind of, but you know, that's what more what I was trying to get at, you know, to see if the bloom or no bloom really did something to the coffee. So let's taste it real quick to see if we can taste the flavors. It's okay, a little hollow. Could be also in the grind setting, but we left the grind setting the same. So that is a controlled variable, okay? So let's go ahead and taste the 30 second bloom. It does taste better. It's more flavorful, it really is. Okay. Okay, so it's not as punchy, it's not as full. It is a little flat in the middle. It's Peruvian. Okay, let's taste this one again. A lot better. The acidity is coming through and it's more lively. So I'm just gonna drink from here, taste it again. Uh, drink some water. That is the no bloom coffee. Okay, so let's go ahead and taste the uh, 30 second bloom coffee. Yeah, the flavors are more defined. It's more of that lemony type of taste that I usually get from that coffee. So let's go ahead and do the extractions. Let's get these coffees out of here and let's see how the extractions actually are. And the beauty of this experiment that I'm doing over again is that um, the coffees, my uh, the bed of the coffee looked the same. And that's really what more so what I was trying to get at. I don't want that to be a defining factor. All right. This is 0 0.92, okay, 0 0.92 TDS. And then I'll put everything on the screen to get you the information that you need in order to see what I'm doing. So now this one's 1.10, so 1.10. So the assessments are right, they're, they're really close. You know, as you brew the coffees and taste them, the bloom does actually help. It helps with me with flavor and also in, in extraction. So that's pretty cool to know that, you know, I'm sure you probably figured that out that too when you, with your experiments, but it's cool to actually have devices, instruments in order to see if you're on the right track of your predictions and all that stuff, you know? So that's really what I was trying to get at. And as I said, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway is that these coffees did look the same in the brew. And that's really one of the things that I was really trying to get at. Although it's still a crappy brew, don't get me wrong. The biggest takeaway in this is that we're getting coffee that is extracted a lot better and tastes a lot flavorful. So that is true. That idea of giving a coffee some time to bloom really does matter. So that's what we got. It's pretty cool, right? So we'll talk to you later, all right?